Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and we may have some horrible news today. It may be the end of Honeycomb. Stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody once again. Uh, I just got a horrible email. Um, and as I'm sure many of you did who are subscribed to the Honeycomb Flight Controls, but many who may not will be maybe shocked to hear that it looks like Honeycomb may be gone. Um, one of the things, uh, as we, before we get into the email that I want you guys to see that was really shocking, here you can see flyhoneycomb.com right here. But if we go to click on the website, it's down. Now, let's move to the next section here. This is where things unfortunately get horrible. So this is the email that I received uh, just a few minutes ago, and uh, we're sort of gonna go through this. Uh, it sounds like, so when the um, lead developer or you know uh, subject creator of Honeycomb, if you will, the original business owner uh, initially started the company, his goal, as we all know, was to create uh, high quality, uh, products that were more financially in reach of the general public and he did a fabulous job with that this is super sad now this only shows as you guys can see here oh maybe you guys can't see that actually let me bring that down just a little bit this shows part one so this email does get cut off and hopefully we'll get the second part as uh, we're talking here but he is stating i am writing this letter to explain the current situation and provide some clarity about what has been going on with honeycomb and offer you my sincere apology if you have been caught up in this in any way i do like that he says i'm not trying to make any excuses or deny responsibility for what happened i should have paid more attention to what was going on and acted sooner i have no one to blame uh but myself for that and to fully understand what how we ended up here we need to start from the beginning so he talks about back in 2012 when he first started the idea of honeycomb he was working on growing the say uh products in the u.s market and as he stated here he nailed it right on the head he stated this all along i saw a massive gap in the market between high volume gaming grade and low volume high-end flight sim equipment so exactly what i've talked about on this channel multiple times logitech was the real general consumer um or logitech slash say tech was the, really the only provider uh, for any kind of decent general aviation equipment. But me personally, uh, I actually bought the Saytech yoke, I remember a long time ago with their little three axis throttle quadrant. Um, and I know opinions vary guys and, and product uh, quality varied. Mine was a POS. Uh, the throttles would ghost constantly. For those of you who don't know, ghosting is when the controller sends an input to the sim that you did not want it to make. It just randomly sends something to it, like the throttle will move or jump, or maybe uh, the battery switch will trigger even though your battery switch is still up, et cetera. That's ghosting. Um, anyway, uh, so for me, this, you know, when, when the Alpha first came out, he read it around the head, and I think that's what made Honeycomb soar and so wonderful. It's the Alpha, as we all know, and the Bravo are really wonderful piece of equipment for their price point, and there's no other equipment like theirs in the price point uh, that matches the quality. So anyway, let's move on here. Um, so he goes to talk about that. Uh, essentially, he came up with the idea of the Honeycomb product, and uh, he but he couldn't find an investor or a partner. In 2016, he had a friend who uh, finally became a business partner and uh, stated that he had the financial uh, resources to get the business started, as well as a bunch of connections and warehouse and manufacturing uh, connections in uh, Hong Kong and uh, as well as people to uh, help uh, transition the AutoCAD files into uh, production um, states. Okay, he also talks about distribution networks that this friend provided in both the US and Europe and Asia um, to sell the Honeycomb products. So the idea was that the partner, his business partner, would handle all the financial situation in regard to Honeycomb, and he, the, the, uh, the creator here, uh, the owner, would develop uh, the products. He would just focus on development and product uh, um, advancement, things like that, the Charlies, the Bravos, etc. He was just going to focus on the production side of things and the development side and let his partner handle all of the um, financial aspects. Well, one of the things that also happened here. Okay, well, let's see. Yep, we got a couple more here, guys. So we'll see what happens here in a minute. 
Uh, let's go back to this one here. So anyway, long story short. So let's get through this so we can get through the other emails because I haven't read the other two, so we'll read those together. Uh, so um, basically, long story short, the friend, like I said, takes care of the finances. Um, this gentleman, um, what is his name again? I forgot what his name is. I'm sorry. Oh, it just says Honeycomb Aeronautical. Okay, next doesn't. Tell me his name. I can't remember his name. I've heard it before. Anyway, this poor gentleman, um, unfortunately, stepped too far away. Uh, the friend was only supposed to have partial ownership and ended up uh, basically giving 100% o- ownership uh, under a corporate umbrella that his business partner was associated with. Long story short, guys, uh, all of the costs of manufacturing uh, were never released um, to the manufacturing companies. Um Items that were already produced were never paid for um, in the last year. Um, pre-orders for the Charlie. Guys, I hope that none of you here are on the pre-order, but uh, all of the money for the pre-order that was supposed to go to the production of the Charlie uh, never made it there. Um, it says all the money right here. All the money received for the Charlie pre-order had gone elsewhere. Uh, the situation escalated in July of 2023, shortly after we missed planned shipping date for the pre-orders, when the factory partner contacted me directly to inform me that he had still not received payment for the Charlie or several thousand Alpha and Bravo units. Uh, let's get into the next one, guys. So that was part one. Let's go to part two here. Um, this poor guy. Uh, so let's see here. I flew to Hong Kong as soon as possible to meet to the factory, to meet with the factory and my now soon to be ex-partner to find out what was really going on and as i suspected things were bad but i managed to negotiate a deal between all three parties where my partner and his companies would no longer handle sales and distribution i would also handle the factory uh partner directly um as part of the agreement i was committing to uh, yep committing to help the factory to recover the outstanding invoices by paying a significant premium of the existing stock as well as the charlie production in exchange, the factory agreed to manufacture the Charlie despite the outstanding debt, but I had to pay for the injection tooling as well as 50% deposit of the production cost up front. Last month, all parties finally signed the agreement and I have been able to find the buyers for the majority of the existing uh, inventory already. I used the slim margins left from the inflated cost to make sure that the Honeycomb staff, who were also owned who were also owed money by my partner, were getting paid. Some salary payments are still outstanding, but everyone should be fully up to date by next week. Unfortunately, this has been left me unable to prepay for the tooling or deposit required to start the production of the Charlie right now. Wow, gosh, that is awful. Uh, you can argue that the customers come first, and I should have prioritized the Charlie production, but in my book, people come first. They have mouths to feed and rent to pay. I agree with that. Um, and... Uh, I know many of this may sting. Um, yes, money has gone to Charlie's. People are owed a Charlie product. Um, but we got to remember that there are people involved here. I, I agree with that statement. Uh, the people do come first because mouths to feed, rent to pay. And we don't know everyone else's finances. The, the employees certainly aren't at fault here. Um, and, you know, we all know that things are, I mean, look at the cost of groceries these days. So, I, I agree with that statement. I really do. Um, since it's highly unlikely that I will receive the payments for the pre-orders from my ex-partner, I am currently working on several finance deals to be able to start production as soon as possible. How I pay it back is not clear yet, but I am determined that all customers receive the product they paid for regardless of the financial impact to myself. Oh, mercy. Ultimately, it's my responsibility that we are in the situation and I can't expect anyone to carry the financial burden but myself. I am incredibly sorry to everyone who has been caught in the middle of this and hasn't received their Charlie order as promised. I really appreciate everyone who has stuck around despite the extended delays, uh, but I think it's my duty to tell you that you might get the product faster if you cancel your order and reorder it uh, from one of the official resellers once they have confirmed that the shipment is on the way. Damn. Uh, funding an order that is tied to an invoice is a lot easier than uh, financing one that I have to pay for out of my own pocket. And while I will do everything in my power to ship the pre-orders first, I might not be able to do so. If you do cancel your order, you need to be aware that you will have to dispute the charges with your credit card company to get a refund. All right, so that's a big one. And that makes sense, again, because there's no financial backing in the company. I mean, you guys are catching the gist by now. The company's broke. It has no money. Uh, So if you do cancel your order, uh, there isn't going to be a refund because essentially what that means is that his bank, or I'm not going to say his bank because that that sounds crappy, Honeycomb uh, 
company's bank is that account is broke. Uh, so they're not going to refund any money because there's no money in the account to be refunded. So what he's saying is if you guys have put a pre-order, whether it be through your bank, your credit card, PayPal, whatever it may be, which essentially would be the same thing, um, actually PayPal users, if that was even an option, you're probably going to have to go through PayPal, just heads up. Uh, but you need to go to them and say that the charge is um, uh, now unauthorized. You have canceled your order. Show them proof of cancellation um, in order to get that money to be returned. And what will happen there is the two banks will work it out and pull the money out uh but this is going to get messy and even that that might be quite the hairball for you guys uh for any of you who may be stuck in this be ready for it that's probably going to be a hairball because at the same token the initial charge was authorized um so i'm not sure how how the banks will look at that but i guess you guys have to see on one-on-one -on -one basis maybe let me know down below what your thoughts are uh, for those of you who already canceled your Charlie order but have not received a refund, you will have to do the same. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, but there's nothing I can do in the matter I have tried. I will still send a honeycomb hat to everyone has promised, canceled or not. Just have a little patience with me. Poor guy. Um, the online store, here it is, which, as mentioned, runs through Shopify, uh, also manages our faulty return process. It's controlled by the honeycomb entity in Hong Kong, which is owned by my former business partner. That explains why the website is shut down. Damn, dude. Uh, when Shopify didn't receive the payments for the cancellations, they blocked further refunds and we lost ability to send out return labels for faulty products and ship new replacement unit backs. Holy crap. Uh, not that it mattered much because the warehouse handling the returns had already stopped shipping out replacement products before that uh, due to, you guessed it, outstanding invoices. So if you guys are waiting, if you sent your def uh, defective unit back and you are waiting on a shipment to return, uh, that's why you're still waiting. Holy crap, dude. You can argue that I should have seen the writing on the wall much sooner, but I kept getting promises that it would get sorted out next week, and sometimes it did, which uh, restores some faith, but most of the time it didn't. For the last two months, I have been trying to get units shipped from Europe to replace the faulty products, but my ex-partner has control of the inventory, and I have so far not been able to get him to cooperate on the matter. What an asshole. Sorry for my French. Uh, man, dude, this guy's a piece of work. I am working on a solution with the factory. They have promised to supply me with replacement units once I have paid for the tooling on the Charlie, which should be soon. The one bit of good news is that we have reached an agreement that will, uh, that he will sell his assets in Honeycomb if I can find a new partner to buy him out. That's where I'm currently at. So this guy screwed him over. Spent all of his money in bogus places, created a shit ton of debt. Again, pardon my language. This is aggravating as hell to hear. Uh, and then tells him that, yeah, I'll give you my, my shares of the company if you find someone to buy me out. So snaking more money. He's going to snake more money out of this poor guy or whoever this new partner is to make things right. This guy's a crook. Oh, he should be arrested. I, I don't know how this isn't theft. I mean, th th talk to me here. This should be theft. Theft of theft of, 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 of product, theft of, of, of financial gain. I mean, <sighs> holy crap, dude. Anyway, I'm talking to several great companies that not only have the financial means to accelerate Honeycomb's growth, but also the technical expertise to help me develop an even better product in the future. And I'm very optimistic that one of them is going to come through. Honeycomb is a great business opportunity. And while there are some housekeeping items to deal with, the solutions are easily executable. Deliver the Charlie as promised, replace the faulty products, and make sure that all the creditors have been paid before the remaining purchase sum is paid out. Once that is out of the way, we can focus on the future. Let's see what part three says. Wow, this guy's on it, man. I wish that I had gone out earlier and told everyone what was going on, but in the beginning, I expected, to be, I expected it to be small and easily fixable, bump in the road, and more recently, I was concerned that it could jeopardize the chances of getting Honeycomb back on track, or Honeycomb back. Uh, but finding a solution is taking longer than expected and I can no longer in good conscience let this go without being truthful to you about the situation. You earn my respect right there, sir. Um, and yes, yes, I agree. He should have seen the writing on the wall. I agree. He should have stepped in sooner. Apps of freaking lootly. Uh, when you've got this much invested in it, um, you know, you 
you got to keep your eye on the sale, man. Um, you know, keep the blue up top. You know, that's what that's what we always say in the, in the flight sim world, right? You're in aviation. Keep the blue up top. And it, it sounds like he stared in the in the brown a little too long. And, and that sucks. I mean, it, it, this could have happened to anyone, I feel. I feel like this could have happened to anyone. I, I'm, I, I, I applaud him for taking fault. Yes, uh, he's definitely responsible in, in many ways for this. In part, right? It, it's always two sides. Um, but, uh, you know, he gets props for, for, for doing this, in my opinion. There are lessons to be learned from this and things I could have done differently, but hindsight is always twenty twenty Fact. Um, as we just discussed, I feel terrible for everyone who has been affected by this, but Honeycomb is my baby. Nice. And I will fight for her to the bitter end. And when I get her back, I will right all the wrongs. That is my promise to you. God, this guy's making me like all choked up inside. Like, seriously, like this is, this is effed up, dude. I am incredibly, incredibly proud of what Honeycomb has achieved and the products that we have created, but devastated about the situation we have ended up in. I still have big dreams for the future, including my nonprofit, the Flight Sim Academy, which through an incredible industry support is going full steam ahead with the opening with opening 30 high school aviation STEM centers in North America. Really? I didn't know about this and more beyond uh, to not only inspire kids to become aviators, but also help them to achieve that dream. That is beautiful. Got my vote right there, pal. Honeycomb is a key part of that plan and will donate 15 complete simulators, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and Deltas to equip the sim labs at the centers. Uh, a lot of the new products and development had to be put on hold due to the financial situation. But once I have a new partner in place, we will be able to launch all of those fairly quickly and start new projects I've been planning, which I can't wait to tell you about. Now, now, Nikki, slow down, slow down. I, I'm excited for your th enthusiasm, but you're talking once again about as soon as I get a partner, you're going to go back full steam and jump into it. Slow down and... and Make sure that you're that you've got your solid ground of what's going on around you, man. Don't let this happen again. Not to say that everyone's going to do what this d bag did, um, but uh, man, uh, I hope he keeps his shields up for a while, right? I don't care who the company is. I don't care how renowned they are, how big they are. Keep your damn shields up for a while until you know you're safe, pal. Anyway. Uh, I cannot begin to express my gratitude to my team, especially in tech support and social media, who, despite not being paid one time since things have escalated, have stayed at stayed with me while dealing with an incredible amount of stress, not being able to help people and tell them they will receive their product or the real reason why it hasn't shipped. Uh, they are the ones who were on the front lines and experienced the justified anger of customers who were waiting for their products if you contacted them please be or if you contact them please be kind i agree with that guys please remember guys no matter what industry you call no matter what customer service and i've worked customer service so i felt some of this no matter what company you call remember that the person that you're talking to on the phone has nothing to do with this they are paid to say xyz they are told to do xyz that is just their job they have no insight into the back end and uh remember that remember you know and i've called plenty of companies i just called one a couple months ago you know where i was pissed off i was raging hell um but my first words out of the mouth to this poor representative uh, i'm not going to say the company or the situation or anything like that i'm not going to blast anybody else uh but um my first words out of the mouth were hey so and so i want you to have the heads up i am pissed i am madder than shit I am not mad at you. You have done nothing to me. You have done nothing wrong. I'm hoping that you will do everything in your power to help me. But I want you to know I'm not going to be particularly nice. But it's not directed at you. And I, and I don't mean to ruin your day. And I will do my best to contain it. And, and then I off I went, right? Fire, flamethrowers were out after that. So I agree with that. If you contact them, be kind. Remember that the person you're talking to is not the person responsible. Uh, they are all dedicated people who would love to provide you with first class customer service, but have not been able to do so for a while to not fault of their own fact. I am also very thankful to all of you who have shown your loyalty and support from day one. I hope that once I have regained full control of my company and gotten things back on track, I can earn your loyalty and support once again. Overkill simulations will be here for you, Nikki. I promise you as soon as you make a new announcement, I'll be blasting that as well. I apologize for the poor communication. Understand your frustration while I wish I could provide you some specific timeline. However, moving forward, my team, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I promise. Uh, I will promise is... <laughs> oh, one thing I will promise is that... That's what I get for skipping ahead. Is that it will be done as fast as humanly possible. Please accept my apologies. And thank you for your patience. Thank you for all the time to read this very long letter and let me explain the situation in detail. Holy crap, man. 
What a horrible situation. I love that he's optimistic about finding a new partner, a new company, a new uh, source of financial backing. I truly hope he does. I truly hope that there are companies who do see the value in his product. Um, the Honeycomb series, as I said in the beginning of this, they, were, they are a game changer. He absolutely provided something that was quality, that was well-built, sleek-looking, gorgeous materials at an affordable price. You know, he, he hit it on the head. We had the Satex slash Logitech garbage, in my opinion. If you love it, great. If you got a good one, seriously, I'm glad. Because $250 price point that they've rocked for years to get a POS sucks. Mine was garbage. It just it did not work. And customer service was even worse. Uh, they actually told me with my throttle quadrant that I needed, I, mind you, this is the second day of owning it. I needed to take it apart and clean it. Oh, it was just the sensors are that they come off the line dirty. Literally, that's what was told to me by them. They told me that they were aware that their the see the throttle quadrant I think was like eighty five bucks or seventy five bucks. But they told me that they were flat out aware that it came off the production line dirty and that I needed to take the damn thing apart and clean it. Stupid. Anyway, Logitech rant over. Um, and then the next step up was, you know, you start getting into the Yoko and, and uh, real sim gear and things like that, which are fantastically amazing products, but a fantastically amazing price point uh, and not amazing in the good way. Like that's shocking. Uh, the Yoko's and the real sim gear stuff. It's beautiful stuff. It's wonderful, but really expensive. And Nikki and his honeycomb products did exactly what he set out to do. They bridged the gap. They made a good product that was effective, that was functional, feature rich at a price where people could actually afford to bring it home without regretting it for the next three months paying off credit card debts. And this is again speaking to the average consumer, right? So I really hope that this isn't the end. Uh, and that's why I titled the video, you know, with a question mark. Uh, I really hope it's not the end of Honeycomb. Um, this will break my freaking heart. Uh, to those of you who do have the outstanding pre-orders and orders, remember what he said, cancel your orders. It's probably going to be faster to get your refunds. You need to go through your banks and dispute the charge. I would probably keep this email on hand uh, if you guys have it. And I would imagine you're registered just like I am because you've purchased a product from them. Um, you know, make sure that you guys uh, keep these emails on hand so you can show it to the bank if required. I don't I don't know if that's going to help or not. Um, I don't know how all that works because my only concern is that your initial payment was authorized. I guess that's the only place that I would be concerned about the bank coming back at you. Right. But it's now authorized for a product that can no longer be provided. And I think that's the backbone that's going to help everyone get their money back. Um, but anyway, um, Man, thoughts, best wishes to Nikki, um, the founder of Honeycomb. Absolutely. I hope that, uh, I hope things bounce back. I really do. I really do. We, we need, the flight sim community needs your product. Um, otherwise, we're back to the garbage junk until we can find something that meets its quality. You know, I know we have the Velocity. Um, I know that's a, a pretty decent piece of equipment, but in my personal opinion, for its price point as well, uh, I think the Bravo and the Alpha are certainly a much better way to go. And so, again, really sad event, really sad uh, set of events here. Um, and I hope they, I hope he, I hope he succeeds. I hope he perseveres. Um, this will be, this will be a major heartbreaker if we never hear from Honeycomb again. Um, so, anyway, let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below. I would love to hear them. Please, please keep the comments respectful. Keep the comments respectful. You're allowed to say things that are negative. Keep it respectful. All right. Uh, put yourself in this man's shoes, right or wrong on his actions. Put yourself in his shoes right now. He has just publicly blasted himself. Um, put himself in the barrels and the sights of every end user who, who is a part of this. So um, give support where you can. Good thoughts where you can. Your negative comments, you're welcome to them. You're welcome to their thoughts. I said a few here. Had to agree that, yes, a lot of this he should have seen sooner. Uh, but uh, keep it keep it respectful, guys. Anyway, as always, guys, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.